In this video, I'm going to show you how to take derivatives of functions just like this using a really nice trick that's going to save you a lot of time. Before this video, you probably would use the quotient rule, which can be time consuming and kind of annoying to use. So let me just show you how fast you can do this derivative. I'm just going to do it. It's, it's just one, one line, in fact. And there you go. That's the derivative. You can check using the quotient rule. But let me show you exactly how I did that so quickly. So here it is. Here is the trick. And what makes it work is when these functions exactly match. And you'll notice with this exact problem, this x squared and this x squared exactly match. And that's what allows us to use this quotient rule shortcut. And here's what it's supposed to be. It's f prime of x, so it's just the derivative of this f of x, times ad minus bc. Those of you who have seen some linear algebra might recognize that as the determinant formula for a two by two matrix, which is kind of interesting. And then it's over the bottom squared, which is just what you would expect in a quotient rule. So using this trick and just doing a little bit of mental arithmetic, I was able to take the derivative of this function and simplify it in just one line. But let's go through it in, in two steps using this trick and then simplifying. So I noticed that these first two things match. That allows me to use the trick. And then I plug it into this formula. So f prime of x, what's the derivative of x squared, which is f of x in this case? The derivative of x squared is 2x. And then it's times ad minus bc. So a is in front of this first f of x. So that's simply 1 in our case, times d. Well, in this case, our d is 3. In fact, it's minus 3. You got to be careful with the negatives. Those also apply here. Minus b, which in this case is 5, times c. c in this case is 1, the coefficient of this f of x. And then that's all over the denominator squared. And so if you simplify this, we'll simply get the bottom squared I have minus 3 minus 5 is negative 8 times 2 will give me that negative 16x on top. And there you go. It's all nice and done. Let me show you another good example where you can use this trick that you might not have expected. I want to take the derivative of this function. But if I were to use the quotient rule to simplify it, then it would be a little bit messy. It would be a little bit annoying. So I'd love to use my trick. But my trick requires that the first two functions on the top and the bottom be the same and the last two be constants. Well, ah, they're not quite the same in this case. Or are they? You'll notice here there's a factor of 4 in common between the x squared and the x term. What if I factor that out? Well, all of a sudden, now we're able to use the trick because the first two functions match and they're followed by constants. Here, my a will be 4, my b will be 1, my c will be 1, and my d will be 1. In fact, negative 1. So let's just plug this in to the formula trick. We take the derivative of this thing, that's just 2x plus 1. And then we times that by ad minus bc. In this case, a times d, that's 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And then it's minus b times c. In this case, there's like an invisible 1 there. So b times c will simply be 1 all over the denominator squared, just like the quotient rule. And if you like, you can simplify this minus 4 minus 1, that'll be a negative 5. You can simply replace this with a negative 5. 
and you're all done. How great is that? How much time saving is that? Hey, if you liked this trick, you should check out this derivative trick right here. I guarantee your calculus teacher didn't show you this one. And whoa, what's, what's that? That's a nice looking subscriber button. Huh, if you want to see more things like this, maybe, uh, maybe you should give it a click. I don't know. It's up to you. Have a great day.